Okay, I'd say I've been using Arch Linux for about a year now, I guess. No, it is never broken, and I've never had a mega time-consuming problem with it. I've I am beautiful, no matter what they say. <laughs> I made little improvements as I went along, such as more LF custom shell scripts and additional D-menu shell scripts, and a few updates here and there. Because my attitude to learning was really bad when I was installing Arch, um, I'd spend about five days fully setting up the system, then quickly began to learn more efficient tools like LF. So let's say 10 hours in total. If I include Ubuntu and shit and learning them beforehand, I would say it's 15 hours total. So I'd say roughly that's how much time I spent on this whole thing. And the truth is this stuff is actually really easy to do, but if you have a really bad attitude towards going about it, you will take a very long time and you will struggle. This is why on my channel, I always say understand the process and go slow and go step by step instead of trying to do everything at once. Which is why I come up with things like, oh, maybe swap to Mint first and then change the programs you use and then you can worry about changing the operating system. There's a much easier way of making the transition. And yes, my mindset also changed a lot after doing this and my attitude to learning improved a lot, but I will not include it in the analysis because that is a, that is a rather personal thing and that doesn't count to efficiency, which is what we're trying to discuss today. Everything on my system is done with the snap of two fingers. I don't have to like think about anything, whether it is moving the carrot to the right place because I made a little bit of an error and then I want to correct it and move back or whether it's some like finding um, a file or finding notes for a certain lecture, or knowing where it is, or changing directories. I don't have to think about any of that. I just snap my fingers and do it. Everything is done by key bindings. And over time, within like the first week of every new semester, the key bindings just become muscle memory. So I can just go to wherever I want instantly. And because I use Zathura, I don't have to have Google Chrome with 50 motherfucking tabs open. And all right, let, let's use an example everyone can understand. Let's say you're doing a math problem with pen and paper. You're writing things down and working things out. But every 10 seconds, your pen disappears from your hand and teleports somewhere else on the table. And you then have to find it, pick it up, and then resume doing the math problem. Even though you get really good at finding that pen in about one second. You can do it in a half second. It disappears, you quickly find it and pick it up. You still need to pause thinking about the problem change focus to looking for the pen, find the pen, pick it up, and then shift focus back to solving the problem. Even if this takes you 0.5 seconds to find that pen, your brain is still reset. You need to rethink about what you were just about to write before the pen disappeared. You were set back. Your RAM has reset, so to speak. In Windows, I see many of my university peers using Chrome or Adobe or some bullshit to see PDF, which is just horrible. All the notes are given in PDFs, and PDFs is actually the best format if you have the right tools, okay? I use Z Zathura to open PDFs, and I use LF shell scripts to run Zathura through it, so I can open it through key bindings. And it took me about 15 minutes to set up LF as a whole. So to set up this exact shell script, the open CMD, I'll put it on the, the fucking screen, I'd say it took about, I think, like two minutes. It's not really, or even one minute. I mean, I just copied it, so it's not even that bad. And another thing is, because of muscle memory, I just know where everything is. Everything for the current module. Let's say I'm working on some fucking electrical engineering module, and I want to pull up a lecture slide about a certain topic. I just know where it is, or I can find it relatively quickly as well, because I can just open multiple things in multiple times, and then one of them will spark my memory and tell me, oh, okay, that's the lecture I'm supposed to be looking at for this problem. If you have 50 fucking Chrome tabs open, you will literally spend dozens of seconds scrolling through the Chrome tab to see where it is. If you have that desktop environment where you got like file icons on the fucking on the fucking desktop. It's like, yeah, you can click it open, but then you'll spend a lot of time, like, that. that's such a horrible view. It, it, it opens a tiny window file manager like that, and then you have to look at what the name is, which is just horrible. You just, I just open up LF and I just pattern search. I don't even need to do that, or I just press KJ a few times. You use a lot of time doing that. And another thing is, Adobe and Chrome both take like 10 seconds to open, which is just ridiculous. So even though it would take you 5 to 10 extra seconds to find that Chrome tab, or find that file, or whatever, or find that mouse. Okay, mouse I'd say takes like 2 seconds extra to find, like doing that swap, but whatever. Your thought flow is still broken, right? Like I said, swapping tasks. Your RAM is clear. This is what breaking train of thought means. You have to redo some of the work you did. And that extra 5 seconds 
or even two seconds could wipe up to 30 seconds of work depending on how focused you were at the time and what the nature of the task you were doing was. One second times 10 is 10 seconds. So let's just assume that all of your interrupts only add a second, which is not true. They add a lot more than a second. And let's say these interrupts happen about 10 times a day, right? Whether it's finding the mouse, having to find the right file, having to find a different file, having to find the Chrome tab. Let's just say on average, all of those things happen about 10 times a day, which I guess is actually reasonable. I think 10 is like a reasonable number. If you multiply all this by 365, 1 times 10 times 365, you get 6 minutes. And 6 minutes times 30, well, it's about 3 hours, right? So now when we look at the assumption of that 1 second interrupt to more like 20 or 30 seconds, which is probably a lot more realistic, because like I said, even though the interrupt is that long, it's not that long, it's often longer, it still wipes a lot of the things you did, so you have to redo. So now you're at three hours, and this is in one year. Now factor in things like mental fatigue, and the impact on your productivity seems a lot more severe, it seems a lot more serious. And I cannot tell you if this Linux shit was worth it, because that is a personal judgment question to make. You, you, you're gonna have to determine that yourself, if this is something you did. But from a return on investment in time standpoint, yes, it fucking was. And I'm only one year into this shit. And the sad part is, when I actually installed this stuff, my attitude to learning was very bad, I didn't understand what was going on, and I was blindly following steps online, which actually meant I took a much longer time than necessary to install this stuff. If you understand what's going on, you can actually install this stuff faster than a fucking Windows update. It is actually very easy to do. And I understand people find Vib intimidating, and Linux scary or whatever the fuck. Regardless of the fact that there are mountains of manuals, video tutorials, resources, and chat fucking GPT, I understand if you find it intimidating and you don't want to do it. It is your life. But don't get on a high horse and pretend that this that this Linux stuff is nerd shit and you are actually secretly more efficient because you don't have to waste time learning something new. That is a really bad mentality. Mathematically, this stuff is actually worth it because from a time standpoint, you get massive returns on your investment. And yes, I would recommend you to dive into this shit because it does provide a lot of return on investment. You will save a lot of time in the long run. And you will save a lot of productivity as well. And as we all know, time is money. And money means more Apple products, which is clearly the only thing that matters in life. Thank you for watching.